Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena game to video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a black green extra land drop deck, which features the full playset of Oracle of Moldaya, a 4 mana 2 2 elf shaman from Jumpstart that lets us play an additional land on each of our turns, and we also play with the top card of our library revealed, and we can play lands from the top of our library as well. And with a whopping 29 lands in this deck, Oracle of Moldaya will provide a ton of card advantage. Now the real end game of this deck is to eventually ramp into a Bolas Citadel, a 6 mana legendary artifact that lets us look at the top card of our library at any time, and then we can play lands and cast spells from the top of our library, and if we cast a spell this way we have to pay life equal to its mana cost instead of having to pay mana for it, so that allows us to exchange our life total for a ton of card advantage, and then we can also tap the citadel and sacrifice 10 non-land permanents to make each opponent lose 10 life, so that can potentially also help us close out the game. So once we get a Bolas Citadel in play, our deck is very good at letting us play extra lands, since we've got a ton of creatures in the deck that let us play even up to two additional lands each turn. So we can very quickly play all the lands on the top of our deck until we find more spells, which of course we can exchange with our life total to play those as well. But eventually we're going to get low on life, so that's where Dread Presence comes in handy. A 4 mana 3-3 three, three Nightmare that says whenever a swamp enters a battlefield under our control, we either draw a card and lose one life, or Dread Presence deals 2 damage to any target and we gain 2 life. So if we're starting to get low on life, we can choose a second mode on Dread Presence, maybe start taking out some opposing creatures or go directly to the opponent's face to start closing out the game. And then with the extra life gained from the Dread Presence, we can keep playing stuff off the top of our deck with our Bolas of Citadel until we find more copies of Dread Presence or more creatures that let us play extra lands, so we can keep going with the Bolas of Citadel until we eventually just win the game by dealing enough damage with our Dread Presence. So the game plan is very simple, just get a Bolas of Citadel in play and then good things will happen. Our deck is very capable of winning the game the very same turn where we play Bolas of Citadel, thanks to the setup that these extra land drop creatures provide. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana we've got some additional acceleration with two copies of our Boreal Grazer, which also lets us put an additional land from our hand onto the battlefield. And even in the later stages of the game that can still be useful if we play Grazer off the top of our deck with a Citadel, it only costs us one life, and then we can potentially put a Swamp from our hand onto the battlefield, since we've been so busy playing lands off the top of our deck that we might have a bunch of lands stuck in hand as well. And then we get to trigger Dread Presence, which can easily regain all the life we spent on playing the Grazer in the first place. Then we also have the full playset of Lanor Elves, so that gives us a total of 6 1 mana accelerants to ramp into our various 3 mana extra land drop creatures on turn 2. Then we also have the full playset of Maze Mind Tome, a 2 mana artifact that we can tap right away, put a page counter on it, and then scry 1, and we can also pay 2 mana, tap the Maze Mind Tome, put a counter on it, and then we get to draw a card instead. And then when there are 4 or more page counters on Maze Mind Tome, we have to exile it, and if we do, we also gain 4 life. So Maze Mind Tome combos quite nicely with our Bolas of Citadel, because we can potentially play the Maze Mind Tome off the top by paying 2 life with Bolas of Citadel, and then we can use the Scry ability right away without having to spend any additional mana, so that lets us manipulate the top of our library to potentially set up our Bolas of Citadel, so we can find more lands if we need more lands, or find more spells if we need more spells. And then once we put the fourth counter on Maze Mind Tome, we get to gain for life, which of course is very useful in a Bolas of Citadel deck. And then at 3 mana we've got all these extra land drop creatures with 2 copies of Azusa Lost But Seeking, only 2 copies because she is a legendary, but does let us play 2 additional lands on each of our turns, as opposed to the 1 additional lands from Dryad and Wayward Surtooth. But Dryad of the Elysian Grove has another very useful ability, saying lands we control are every basic land type in addition to their other types, which means that even if we play a Forest or Fable Passage, it will count as a Swamp for Dread Presence, giving us a ton of extra triggers. And Dryad also lets us potentially use our Fabled Passage for mana, so we don't have to sacrifice it right away. That way we get to save the Shuffle effect to potentially manipulate the top of our library with Bolas of Citadel or Oracle of Moldaya if we don't like what we're about to draw. And then we also have the one-off Wayward Swordtooth, which is a 3 mana 5-5, five five, but the Swordtooth can't attack our block unless we have the City's Blessing, which we can achieve by controlling 10 or more permanents at any point in the game, including the Swordtooth. 
and then at 4 mana we've got our 4 copies of Oracle and 4 copies of Drunk Presence, which of course can also function as a card draw engine using the first ability early on in the game, and then once we find our Bolas of Citadel we'll often use a second mode instead. And then we've got our 4 copies of Citadel, and then last but not least we've got 2 copies of Primeval Bounty, a Mythic Rare Enchantment from Jumpstart, saying whenever we cast a creature spell we get to make a 3-3 green beast creature token, whenever we cast a non-creature spell we can put 3 plus 1 counters on target creature we control, and whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control we get to gain 3 life, which is of course a great way to offset the life loss from Bolas of Citadel. And then the mana base is very straightforward, 14 swamps alongside 4 overgrown tombs, and then 7 basic forests alongside 4 fabled passages, but as we've discussed those can sometimes still count as swamps with a dried of the Legion Grove in play. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand's not all that amazing, since we are lacking swamps to play the Citadel. Like, we can ramp up to 6 mana pretty quickly, but then we're going to be lacking the triple black to actually play Citadel. So I think this is actually a mulligan. Alright, this is better. So I'm definitely keeping. Now I could bottom a land and then try to keep all my spells. Although, with Azusa we want to keep as many lands as possible. And then maybe I just bottom the Primeval Bounty and use Maze Mind Tome as a way to dig for my Bolas of Citadel instead. Let's see what we're up against. Turn one planes into an Alsaid, so it could be a life gain deck maybe. And I'll definitely scry end of turn here with the Maze Mind Tome. Might scry again on upkeep, although I can just draw a card with the Tome instead after playing two extra lands with Azusa. Alright, so it's a red white aura or equipment deck. So that champion's gonna kill us pretty quickly. Dread Presence would also be a nice draw. Alright, Oracle of Moldaya, so get to play Azusa. And then just draw an extra card with the Tome End of Turn. And then hopefully find Dread Presence or Bolas of Citadel soon. So, champion's already out of range of 2 damage from Dread Presence. Plus, of course, they also had the Alsaid. So just winning the game with Citadel is probably our best bet. Now, I like fetching up forests when we already have 3 swamps in play. That way we have more swamps in the deck to naturally play with a Dread Presence available. So we'll draw another oracle, and then I think I'm scrying. And the Dried of Legion Grove we can bottom for now. Alright, so let's see what's on top of our deck with oracle. Keep forest untapped since we've got a bunch of one drops. There's a Dread Presence, alright. So I don't think I want to shuffle the Dread Presence, since we can use it to draw extra cards as well. And then I guess I might as well attack for one. Hopefully we don't die this turn. It's gonna be a Sentinel's Mark. So they're gonna get to gain six. Now the downside of Oracle is that our opponent also sees the top card of our library. So they get a bit of additional information there. Alright, so we'll play Dread Presence. And then probably play this untapped. And then I could deal two to the Alsaid, they can sack in a response so we don't gain the two life. I can also just draw a card. But we can just play the Forest of the Top for free with Oracle anyway. So let's deal two to the say to just get that out of the way. And they're gonna sack it in response. Play 
play forests, play swamp, and then now I'll we'll draw a card and lose one. Another Dread Presence, all right. So I can draw the Dread Presence with the Maze Mind Tomb, and then hope there's some extra lands on top. All right, Fabled Passage and a Swamp. So I can fetch with Fabled Passage, get a Swamp, and then we're just gonna deal some damage to our opponent, I think. So we don't die to the Champion of the Flame next turn. Get another Swamp. And then I can even play an extra Oracle and play Overgrown Tomb. Play this one tapped. And then now do I still deal two damage or do we draw a card? I guess I'll draw the card here. Alright. And then no attacks. So not a bad turn. We have 11 lands in play already, although there's Core Spirit Dancer. Although they seem to be out of auras, that's a good thing. And there's Bolas of Citadel, so... Play the Swamp. Draw a card. Maybe could have even uh, played the other Dread Presence first, since we had enough mana to do both. But yeah, we're gonna get to go off this turn. Our likelihood of just winning the game right now is pretty high. Alright, I guess we'll play the Dread Presence now. And then... One of the triggers will deal two to the Spirit Dancer, the other one will draw cards since I don't want to pay six life for another Citadel. They might have a pump spell to save Spirit Dancer here, maybe a Karametra's Blessing. Alright. Play Primeval Bounty and then hope there's more lands on top. If we hit a spell, that could be bad. But I think I gotta keep going here. Alright, great, a land on top. And now we just start going face, I think. I'll play this untapped. Can just pay one life for the Gracer, sadly no swamps in hand to play. but we do get to make a 3-3 beast. Now every single land counts as a swamp. And our opponent concedes, had another swamp on top, was gonna be four more damage, and we've got a ton of extra land drops still available, plus we had another oracle in hand we could play. So yeah, that's how the deck goes off once we get a Citadel in play. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty nice looking hand. Turn 1 Elves, turn 2 Azusa, hope to draw some extra lands and then Tome can also find more lands. Let's see what we're up against. Turn 1 Mountain into Skirk Prospector. Alright, let's see what we can do against the Goblin deck. Very mine efficient turn here, and then we can scry with Tome to look for lane 6 to play a turn 3 Citadel. Not too shabby. Yeah, I'll keep Fabled Passage. And then we can get a forest to keep more swamps in the deck. I guess we can just play the Grazer. Red Presence, perfect. And we can either fetch with Passage or activate Maze Mind Tomb, but our opponent has already seen enough. Well, definitely an above average turn 3 here, I would say. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play with uh, pretty decent hands. It's a shame we don't have an untapped green source on turn one. Otherwise, we could have even played a turn three Citadel. But I'm still going to keep. Yeah, if we went turn one Elves into turn two Dryad plus Elves, we could have played a turn three Citadel if we draw an extra land. But sadly, Passage is tapped here. We do have a total of 11 untapped green sources, which is usually the number I want when I play cards like Lander Elves that I want to play on turn one consistently. Opponent does appear to be holding a shock here. So it's probably not a Goblin's deck. Well, if we can ever get our Primeval Bounty down, we're going to be in great shape against the Burn deck. Even though we don't have any extra land drops to play, I think I still play Dryad, just as a 2-4 blocker here that doesn't die to a burn spell. Alright, so we get to empty our hand here. I'll keep the Fable Passage uncracked for now, in case we find a Dread Presence later. Azusa gets shocked. And Lanor Elves gets just as struck. Um, don't know if I need to play around a haste creature here. I guess I'll just get in for two. So we'll need a few extra lands as our opponent plays an Odd Laws Merriment. One more land and we get to play Citadel. Probably should have kept the Dryad back because it could block most of the tokens from the Merriments. Right, Lava Quill takes care of Dryad, sadly. But we do get to play Citadel after all. And I'll fetch up a Forest here to keep more Swamps in the deck. And then next turn we get to play Bounty. Not gonna play a Citadel for 6 life. And then just gonna find some of our extra land drop creatures. Second Merriment. Alright, so we'll play Bounty first. And that's the perfect draw here. Put some counters on Oracle. And then I guess we can just draw the card here. Alright. Didn't hit another creature, sadly. Opponent gets a couple three ones. Lava Coil deals with the beast. And adjust the strike. Our opponent's not running out of removal anytime soon. Down to three we go. So can't play Azusa yet, but I can after we play a forest here. And Red Presence is excellent. Alright, definitely need to gain some more life and I guess we'll start taking out some tokens. So I don't have any extra land drops available. Probably okay to just draw with Tome, or I could fetch with Passage. But if we can draw another Dread Presence, I want to hold on to the Fable Passage for now. So yeah, let's just draw for now. Another Tome I can play. And then we'll put the counters on probably just a Dread Presence. Play Surtooth. Gain some more life, play another Dread Presence. Don't have any extra land drops available, but we can still fetch with Fabled Passage or activate Tome. Let us activate Tome first, and then we can just draw since we've got a ton of mana. Alright, so if I fetch... I do want to fetch a Swamp because we don't have Dryad in play yet. And then we'll gain some more life. Let's 
sadly we had to shuffle away the Dryad, so that's no longer on top of our deck. Um, yeah, I guess that's not a bad turn. Can even use the activated ability on Citadel, but her points at 22, so that doesn't do much for us yet. Hope they don't have a Wrath of God. Cleansing Nova, destroying artifacts and enchantments instead. Alright, I guess that's fair. Still have another Citadel in hand. And our opponent concedes. Alright, sweet. Primeval Bounty definitely doing a ton of work here alongside Bolas' Citadel. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with... A pretty expensive hand with two six drops, but just gonna draw some extra lands here. Yeah, I think we keep. Don't have any one drop accelerants, so definitely a bit of a slower hand, but we're pretty likely to draw at least two lands by turn four. Now let's see what we're up against. Forest into elves. So next turn we get to go Dryad plus play an extra land right away. Alright, so we're up against Mono Green Elves with Marwyn. That's definitely a scary card to see this early in the game. But at least we're hitting our land drops, so next turn we could already play Citadel if we draw land. And Edwina's Elite, also very good alongside Marwyn. And another Visionary. If we can dodge a Lord like the Archdruid here, that would be great. Alright, sadly drew an Elves and not an actual uh, land here. So I guess we'll play Oracle, doesn't matter which land we keep untapped because we can still make green mana with the Swamp as well, thanks to the Dryad. Alright, so next turn we get to play Citadel and hopefully go off. Hopefully we're not dead. An Allosaurus Shepherd could also do some damage here. And by doing some damage, I mean present lethal damage. And yep, there's a Shepherd. Make that too. Although they'll have to tap Marwyn to use the Shepherd's ability. So I can easily jump with the Lenor Elves. Problem of course is the lower on life we get, the less effective Bolas the Citadel becomes. So I can jump. Jump, take 15. And then keep one extra land creature available. Although at 5 life it's going to be pretty rough, pretty much needs perfect draws to have a chance here, but I don't think I can afford to jump with an additional creature here. So play Citadel and hope. Elves puts me to one. So what needs to happen here? I've already depleted my extra lands for the turn. I'm at two life. Yeah, I kind of needed to hit a Dread Presence sooner. Now I can no longer play Dread Presence if I find it. And there's no way for me to gain life to still cast it. And at two life there's no extra land drop creature I can play over the top. So I think I'm just dead here. Yeah, I can't play the Primeval Bounty, sadly. So I can play Sirtooth and uh, call it a day, or I can shuffle first. See what else is on top, but... At one life there's not much we can still do here. I mean, it wasn't a bad turn. But, uh, wasn't good enough here.
Yeah, the turn two Marwin was pretty effective this game. GG's. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with the uh, keepable hands. Double elves definitely helps. Facing turn one venerable knights, so maybe a mono white aggro deck or knight aggro deck. Grazer's an interesting twist, probably still playing the elves. But we can always play Grazer just as a, a blocker next turn. And a loyal Pegasus, so they do appear to be mono whites. Alright, so what's my play? Could play Tome plus Elves, and then Tome can scry towards more lands, can play Grazer as a blocker, and play Elves and just play Overgrown Tomb tapped. I guess that's probably the most conservative play here. Make sure we have 4 mana for next turn. So if we draw a Swamp, we can go Dread Presence, kill one of their creatures. And then put a blocker in place so we don't lose too much life. Alright, they are red-white. Alright, so we get to go Dread Presence. And then probably just killing the Worthy Knight here. Grazer helping us stem the bleeding as well. Veteran pumps the Venerable Knights. Some taking eight, probably still worth it to save Dread Presence. Sadly, drew a forest instead of a swamp. Although I can play Oracle and maybe there's a swamp on top. And we also have Tomb to potentially change the top card of our deck. It's another forest. So I can tap my two elves to play Tome. But then I'm probably going to be forced to block with one of my key creatures here if we don't find a swamp. But if we do find a swamp, the payoff is going to be huge. So I think we do play Tome and Scry. And hope there's a swamp next. Bolas the Citadel. Yeah, not really what we needed here. Alright, let's see what happens next. Might have to scry that citadel to the bottom. Thanks with all. Except the veteran. So, block here. And then... Probably just trade for the oracle on the venerable knight. Take five. And they can put counter on Veteran so it doesn't die to the Dread Presence. Yeah, I think we'll just bottom the Citadel here. We also don't have triple black yet. Alright, Fable Passage is not bad. So, Fable Passage... lets me activate Dread Presence at instant speed. Got the city's blessing, so I've got a 5-5 blocker. And we're kind of stable now. Double Pegasus attacks. We'll block one and kill the other. Dauntless Bodyguard, Protecting Veteran, and I guess we'll just take our draw step and we can draw with Tomb instead of scrying with it. Another Oracle on top, we'll just draw for now. And hope there's a Swamp on top, there is. And then I don't want to target the bodyguard because then we don't gain the life if they sacrifice it in response. 
So let's just kill the Venerable Knight instead. Another swamp on top. And we see a Dread Presence next. And uh, I guess we'll just deal two to the Pegasus now. Suppose I could have looked at the top of my deck earlier, seen the uh, swamp on top, and then just targeted the veteran anyway, but then they still had the bodyguard to sacrifice, so I think it's fine the way we played it. And yeah, we managed to eventually stabilize here, thanks to Dread Presence gaining us life and taking out some key creatures. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. With a decent hand, the fact that Oracle lets us play lands of the top is kind of like a mini Bolas of Citadel, especially if we also have a Dread Presence in play. So, just play Forest for now. Facing Cauldron Familiar, so a Black Rat Sacrifice deck. And then I usually try to hang on to Fabled Passage for as long as possible, because it combines quite well with Dryads plus uh, Dread Presence. Not sure yet what I'm playing next turn. Could just be Oracle. Hope to find a land on top of our deck. As we see, turn two Blood Artists, so it's a Junt Sacrifice deck. Yeah, playing Oracle makes sense here. Just an Elves on top, which we can play. I can shuffle with Fabled Passage. Yeah, I guess I should do that. And then there's a Swamp on top. So next turn we get to play Dread Presence, play Swamp, maybe take out Blood Artists. It's also nice that some of our key creatures like Oracle and Dread Presence have four convert mana costs, so the opponent can steal them with a Claim the Firstborn. Although Murder Strider will work just fine. Alright, now do I still want to kill Blood Artist or do we want to draw cards instead? I think we still kill Blood Artist while we can. And then hope to draw Bolas of Citadel, of course, would be the best draw. Another Oracle of Moldaya would be great. Maze Mind Tome would be nice. So I've got some good draws. Primeval Bounty, we can play as well. Opponent could have a Collected Company here. It's gonna be another Murder Strider instead. At least we got rid of the Blood Artist while we could. Eh, not a Dread Presence. I feel like I'm better off just playing the Dryads and then if we draw land... I can just play Dread Presence into the land and get value right away, in case they have another removal spell here. I don't think my opponent is playing Thoughtseize, so I'm not too concerned with keeping the Dread Presence in my hand. And once again, I think I'm just gonna play Dryad. And there's Mayhem Devil. Opponent passes. And we get to go Dread Presence into Overgrown Tomb. I'll play it untapped. And then dealing two damage here doesn't make a huge difference, so we'll just draw some cards. And Citadel's perfect. Two Mayhem Devils, alright, that does start adding up. But with two Dryads in play already, we can definitely go off here. We'll deal two to a Mayhem Devil. Forest counts as a Swamp. Take out Mayhem Devil. Still have an extra land drop available. And then... I think I'm okay just dealing two and paying two for the Tome instead of drawing it. Primeval Bounty is perfect. Oracle. Oh yeah, we're really going off now. Get to gain three and take out Mayhem Devil. 
hopefully another tomb. And then put counters on, I guess, Dread Presence. Another Dread Presence. Have to be a little careful here since we're getting a bit low on life. Do I still want to play the Sword Tooth? Maybe I'll scry that to the bottom just to be safe. So we can probably play, can also still play the Dryad from our hands to get an extra land drop which represents a ton more life with Bounty and Double Dread Presence. And our opponent concedes. Alright, well, the deck's definitely a ton of fun once we get going with the Ball of the Citadel. Can sometimes be a little bit too slow to set up, so those very all-in creature tribal decks like elves, merfolk, goblins can sometimes kill us before we manage to get our citadel out there or just get us low enough where we don't have a lot of life to work with once we do get the citadel in play. So those are definitely the bad matchups for the deck and the deck with a ton of counter spells I could see being difficult as well if they can keep your bull as a citadel off the battlefield but overall I've been having a blast with this black green extra land deck. I always like these decks with Experimental Frenzy and Bolas of Citadel that potentially let you play half of your deck in one turn. It's always incredibly satisfying. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.